You can look upon it from the outside, it looks like an ordinary office space, but it's actually anything else than an office space. It's the very heart of our product development and design facilities within IKEA. Marcus Engman is IKEA's head of design. He's in charge of a team that produces thousands of prototypes each year. Good morning. Here is the prototypes that you work with right now, each and every designer by their desks. And it's also things that they think is inspiring for them when they sit down at the office space. We also have our own factory on site inside of the office with skilled craftsmen and skilled machinery. Here we are in our epicenter and this is the basement workshop. Not quite as good as IKEA's. Tom Dixon runs his own furniture business. He produces low volume and sells at high prices. IKEA hope the collaboration will attract customers who'd like to own one of his products but can't afford one. It's a bit more David and Goliath in my mind. I always like the ideas of, of benign parasites where, where you know, I, I can make a living out of a, a, this huge beast. So, you know, tap into um, superior engineering, extraordinary global sourcing, and it's just actually the beginning. My first idea was uh, I wanted to do from the cradle to the grave. So I wanted to do a cot and a coffin. So I approached IKEA with that idea and they just said, no, you're joking. Um, but in the conversation that followed, we struck on this idea of, uh, of working on a bed because bed for me is like the primary unit of life or living or furnishing. Since the original conversation, Tom's idea has evolved. So what is it? It's, a, it's not a sofa bed, it's a bed sofa. But it's really a platform for living. For working, for sleeping, for shagging. It's a new way of thinking about furniture as more permanent and more adaptable. From this platform, I can then create a sofa by adding on um, backrests and adding on cushions, an intrinsic coffee table, let's say a reading lamp, like this, all kinds of different things. And then I can evolve the objects during my life to go back to being a bed if I have kids, for instance, or I split up from my wife and I go back to single living. Uh, it can re-become what it was at the beginning. Very much like a, a telephone. These things are not static. You keep on buying apps for them. In fact, you can see the kind of uh, closeness between this design and that design. Encouraging people to customise one of their sofas is a totally new concept for IKEA. Marcus has given the challenge of managing the Tom Dixon project to one of his team, James Futcher. Just going through these detailed concepts from Tom, because so, we need to make some decisions on you know, how we're going to actually produce it and which one is the right one. But working with a maverick designer like Tom is a leap into the unknown. It's a complicated project, isn't it? It is a fairly complicated project since it's a way of constructing a, a upholstery that we have never done before. I mean, could we really change the way that sofas are made using aluminium as the base and not having the typical wood structures with the nailing and the stapling? How could we really industrialise making sofas in a different way? Why is that important? Because it's important to the world. And, you know, we want to make the world a little bit of a better place. That's um, part of our vision within IKEA. I think it's about daring to try something different. Let's see, it could be one of our greatest mistakes, or it could be a really good thing. So to it make doesn't it. work? Who, who's, who's who, to, on the line? who to blame? Uh, if, if it doesn't work, I would say it's, uh, it's James' head. A lot of my responsibility. To make it work. Yeah, you would say. <laughs> I'll do the funny, that's the hard jobs. Yes. James has come to a recycled aluminium factory in southern Sweden to check on the progress of the Tom Dixon project. You can see why we've decided to use aluminium. I mean, it's super strong, it's lightweight, durable, and it's really kind of making something different with aluminium that hasn't been done before. So it's super exciting to see the starting point. So all of that aluminium is going to be melted down. Once melted, the aluminium will be used to make a small number of prototype frames. It's so important that we get this part right. If we don't get it right now, 
will have made thousands and thousands of pieces and it will be so hard to change. Why is it bent at the end? In the first place, you don't have the correct temperature. When we start up the production, you test and see that all dimensions are okay. Here you can really see all the things that we've spent time on designing. You can see the channel where the upholstery parts will clip in, yes. the two channels. Yeah, screw slots. Here you will put the corner piece going here. It's amazing now to see it come to life and very soon we'll be able to cut the panels and actually put them together into a sofa to see how it works. I've just got something jammed. At Product Development HQ, the Tom Dixon prototypes have arrived. You need to actually get it into the groove, and that's what we've worked out with the aluminium. You can choose whether you sit on it, lay on it, or sleep on it. You can bolt on pieces, strap things on, and that's what's new for us. We're letting the customer choose how they put it together, whether it's a sofa or bed. It's up to you. Although it has many functions, Tom Dixon's clear which is the most important. I want to make sure that it's a bed first, and then you can make it into a sofa later. Ultimately, lots of sofa beds are a, a, a reasonably uncomfortable sofa with an even more uncomfortable bed inside, whereas I wanted to make a great bed that would also make a, 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 an amazing sofa, yeah? You know, from a commercial perspective, they sell much more beds than sofas, right? So it gives that base of, of, um, of you know, a successful item from the beginning, and then the sofa is just almost like the cherry on top of the cake. So, you know, you've got to have the first things first, and the first thing is the bed, and the second thing is the sofa. Bed sofa. Back in Sweden, James is having a meeting with the business team to discuss marketing the product. It's really important that in the internal communication yes, that we, we stick with sofa, yeah. not call it sofa bed, ah. nor bed. And I know that I just read a it's magazine a... from Tom where he said it's primarily a bed. Yeah. But it's been tested as a bed as well. It's the frame, yes. Yeah. But it's due to the mattress that we can't call it sofa, a bed sofa or a bed. To be marketed as a bed, Tom's design would need to pass stricter and more expensive safety tests. Yeah. Because it's due to that we have different requirements if it's a sofa, if or it's if a it's sofa a bed. bed, or if it's a bed. Yeah. So what we are fulfilling is the sofa requirements. Yeah. It's due to the mattress that we can't call it a bed sofa or a bed. I honestly thought that that's why we've attached it to the slats with the Velcro. That was to take that. To be able to call it a bed? Yes. No. IKEA's head of design, Marcus, has flown to Milan for the most important furniture festival in the world. We're going to uh, Via Ventura now, which is in Lambrata, where we have the big IKEA exhibition. The festival attracts thousands of designers, journalists and social influencers. And it's where Marcus and Tom Dixon are revealing their prototype to the world's press. I really love it, you know, I think it's so nice, it's quite impressive. And the thing that I like here is also that it's so many variations to this system. Despite Tom insisting it's primarily a bed, IKEA are pushing ahead with their plan to market it as a sofa. I love that you can really see all of the possibilities. It's a landscape of sofas. Hopefully Tom really likes it. Hey, how are you? Tom has just flown in from London. He's not aware of how IKEA are displaying his design. I like to come when it's too late for me to affect anything because otherwise I just get in the way. How are you? How are you? I think it's quite confusing the way we're showing it, so I hope people are able to decode it. Um, there's so many, so many sofas around in so many colours, it's a bit hard to know what you're looking at, really. There's no beds, I mean, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're pushing it into a, a, a non-bed feeling. And, and the bed is, is, the, is the basic departure point, so there's going to have to be a lot of explanation. Despite IKEA displaying it as a sofa, once on stage, 
Tom takes the chance to tell the world what the design really is. We wanted to make something which had a degree of permanence but adaptability. So that was the departure point. The platform is the bed, but the bed can equally be a sofa or something else. You know, maybe you've got a student bed that turns into a family sofa that eventually turns into a, um, a child's bed again. Like, I'm kind of obsessed about beds because beds are such an important part of furnishing generally and probably the only piece of furniture you really need. Tom's continued insistence that it's a bed and not just a sofa means IKEA have to test it as a bed before it can go on sale around the world. I have a gas flame. Although they're sticking to their plans to only market it as a sofa, they're now carrying out flammability bed tests. And now we wait for two minutes. It must pass the safety test for each of the 49 countries it will be sold in. Uh, it should self-extinguish within two minutes, and it has been uh, a minute and a half now. So it's... I don't think it's gonna... No. Extinguish. Any failure is bad news for James. It means they have to change the materials before retesting, which may increase the cost and delay the product going on sale around the world. Okay, James. Oh, it's full of people, huh? Are you finishing? Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks. James is updating Marcus with news about the Tom Dixon project. We've passed all the seating tests, we've passed all the sleeping tests in all countries, unfortunately, except in the US. And um, why is that? It's quite complicated when you need to make something that is for seating and sleeping. Yeah. So we're going to do a retest, but there's a consequence that it won't be on time for the global launch, uh, so a sale start later, but we're doing everything we can do to get it as soon as possible. And just Tom know? Yes, Tom knows. He knows oh. about the delay? Yes. He loves it? No, they're not happy. <laughs> I'm kind of bored of talking about it, actually. And so, if I have to go to the US in six months to talk about it again, after I've talked about it in Europe, I'm going to run out of things to say, yeah? In order to make sure the product can go on sale in all 49 markets at once, IKEA will now have to pass a retest for the American market. We're going to go to the um, bedroom department to um, get some bedding. Tom Dixon's design has passed the retest. We take one of those in the pillow set. I think that'd be really cool. In all of those 419 stores around the world, we can now talk about it as a sofa and as a bed. And that's what Tom wanted to do, Marcus and me wanted to do. You know, it's a great relief. Put the pillows down, take all the cushions off, and, you know, here's a bed. I mean. It looks quite inviting, I could jump in. It is a sofa, it is a bed. It's a multifunctional platform unit that you choose what you want to use it for. Tom's happy, I'm happy, Mark is happy, and I hope the customers will be happy. Ah, oh, it's really comfy. <laughs> it looks uh, very modern as oh. well. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I think it would be something to, to buy, especially for, for my kid. I mean, uh, it can be something that I start up with a bed and then can add on. Maybe that's something for you. The delays and retesting mean the idea of a low-cost piece of furniture is slipping away. Each country will decide how much they sell it for. It's quite nice. But the recommended price has gone up from 530 to 700 pounds. Feels good. It's a relief. And now that it's safe to be released, the bed sofa will go on sale around the world. We made it. It's going to be in the stores.